Everybody, welcome to the Carol Connection. I'm your host, Jared Carroll. Here to bring you guys another great episode. I want to take a chance to shout out my last week's episode, episode 121, with Zach Lozowski. Interesting name. Um, he's a musician as well as a guitarist, and he performs for the band Sue's Garage. He talked about on the podcast graduating in 2020 as a high school student, what that was like for him as a senior. And during 2020, he created his band with his bandmates and how they kind of did that. And he promoted this album as well when he came on the podcast. Um, check, that, check that out, thecarolconnection.simplecast.com. Also available Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the major listening platforms. If you like to watch your podcast, search it on YouTube, The Carol Connection, or Jared Carroll. should pop right up for you. Also, if you want to be a guest or you want to return as a guest, please reach out to me on Instagram, at The Carol Connection, at Jared M. Carroll. Text, snap, whatever, however you contact me, reach out. We could, we could set something up. Uh, for today bringing in two of my favorite guests. Um, it's been a minute since I've interviewed you guys, so bringing in Wally and Eli. What yo, up, yo, dude? dude. It's an honor to be back on the Carol Connection, baby. The it's been too long. crew right here. <laughs> Literally, I've been like low-key dreaming of getting this like set up, and it's been like so long since like you introduced us and like got him on the podcast, and like I brought you back on the podcast now to be able to do this together. Mm-hmm. Like this is what I've been like, kind of waiting for, to be honest. Dude, this is this, the world goes round, dude. This all started when uh, when I got to do the first guest spot on yours, and as soon as I finished recording, it was like I had so much fun. But it was this ignition I can't explain. I was like, dude, I'm doing podcasting for the rest of my life. And at that point, I had done a couple like podcasts and guest spots and done some stuff, but never like sat behind a mic. Like I I would just do like Discord calls. And that's that's what Eli and I used to do. And I was like, dude, Eli. You got you got to check out the Carol Connection. That's the spot. That's Yo, the spot that, literally me. after that fucking first time you got on your episode, man. That's all he would talk. I'm like, all right. This, hey. And I started listening to more of your episodes. I'm like, Yo, this man, this is the next like big podcast, man. I, you really have that potential. <laughs> no, seriously, like I, I love what you do, and in the, especially now more than ever. I know I don't want to go off too off topic right now. We could, it's definitely a topic we could definitely talk about because you know, you especially when you gave me your new shirt. You know, mental health matters. Um, it's just funny because it's just, well, it's not funny, but uh, last night there was like a shooting at where, where I actually live down south in Virginia. <laughs> yeah, so no, it, <laughs> <laughs> bang bang. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but no. Nah, um, <laughs> cheers to that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't shoot that turkey up. That'll be a topic. Uh, what, Christmas, up Christmas first, Thanksgiving. When is the appropriate time to start Christmas? I was thinking down the sure. way here. I think Thanksgiving is a top tier holiday, and I think it deserves fucking respect. But Yo, facts. Continue. No, that's a no. That's a fact. I will agree with that, hundred percent. To wrap up your intro point, you taught us that this is all possible. So I, I want to give you a huge shout out. I mean, your listeners are listening and, and know your excellence, but I, I, I mean, the the lives you've touched and in the, the people that like have been on and myself, like from experience, like. I'm I'm continuing to do my podcast growing in, in ways that I didn't even foresee after doing that, that guest spot. So uh, you keep motivating me. Eli, too. E- Eli, like, seeing your, your wonky-ass fucking video sometimes, I'm just like... At least he has videos. Oh. Ma- maybe, maybe... <laughs> nice. No, I was I was gonna say maybe I'm doing the right thing by not putting out my videos yet. Like, I mean, he's growing. <laughs> if they, if they're gonna be like that. <laughs> well, I am a grower, not a shower. So. Yeah, yeah. Facts. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Yo, but no, I will agree. I'll definitely. I mean, I'll send flowers to you your way, man, because you definitely move. Because I, I, you know, we were talking about it before the recording. You know, I didn't even start my podcast yet when I got on your, you know, your show, and you, and just talking to you and seeing like, you know. You're just one man doing all this work, and it's you know it's definitely igniting a fucking like a a fucking ki- it's just lighting a fire under my ass, you know, because yeah. I'm just like, you know, I just gotta believe in myself, and you know, it, seeing people like you who believe in themselves and have that direct like that fucking ambition, and that's you know, I mean, keep doing you, man. Truly, it's a great it's a great thing. I can't even imagine the people you've touched that don't even reach out. The, yeah, to say like you've done, you've helped them, you know. And I appreciate both of you guys saying that because like this has been like my dream collab for a while to get you guys on here because oh, yeah. it's like you guys understand like the process of like content creation and like doing a podcast. Like I've interviewed a wide variety of people. I've this is episode one twenty two, and I've talked to a lot of different people, and 
the times that when we get together and actually can like collab and create stuff, like a lot of the stuff, like I got the roadcaster, I got the camera working was a large part due when we did the connecting vibe oh, yeah. uh, collab and like just messing, <laughs> just messing around with that was like such a huge stepping stone for me to take this podcast to the next level. And like, then and I've, we've, we've talked about this on the episode you came back on was like the healthy competition and like seeing you guys post episode week after week. And it's like holds me accountable to like continue to book guests and to can continue to do what I do mm -hmm. because if I start slacking, I see you guys getting closer and closer towards my number. And like, oh, there's yeah. something in me that's just so competitive yeah. where I'm just like, you can't stop doing this. Like yeah. you have to continue doing this. So it's like this, this core right here is like, you guys get it and you guys understand. So that's why I was like super like, as soon as I knew you were coming back and like, we were able to kind of like finesse some days around it and like set this up. I've been super excited about it. And I kind of want to give it a little bit to Eli to kind of like catch everybody up. Cause while he's been on the podcast, this is his third time being on the podcast. So he had last uh, episode he was on during like the summer. I forget what number off the top of my head. Um, not too 103. Or 105 or something. something like I think it might have been 105. I'm not sure. It was titled Undeniable. And we, we talked about his concept of being undeniable and what that means to Pain him as right well. Behind you. What? Painting's right behind you for your viewers. Oh, back there? Yeah. I mean, it'd be tough tough for them to see in this. Yeah. I don't have 4K. I, I apologize. I'm an artist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I want to <laughs> give Eli the chance to kind of like talk to the audience and talk to the people who do listen to this podcast of kind of like how he got into post podcasting and why he did it. Because when you, like we said in the beginning of this, like, when you first came on, you didn't have a podcast yet. You were really working on your art and promoting your art. So how did that transition into podcasting? It was, uh, so, cause at the time I was already talking, actually shout out to Gio from, uh, a, 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 a zero HD. Is it a zero HD? Okay. Yeah, okay. That's how it's spelled, but it's oh. A O D. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Scratch that. <laughs> but, and, um, nah, but, um, I talked to him in California, um, you know, about doing podcast. I've always been interested in it and, you know, we always had those conversations every night. Just like, oh, what do we want to do when we're done with, you know, because you know, whatever job we were doing, we were growing weed out there and shit. And we were just like, oh, what are we going to do after our lives? And he said this, he wanted to get more into the music industry and stuff. And, you know, it's still great because he's doing podcasting, doing multiple things. But it's just, you know, having those conversations, I think, was just the start of it. At least the kicking down of the pebble, like down, down the fucking road or whatever. And then progressing over a while. Then, you know, me and Wally met up and. Church. Yo, yeah, church days. Yo, shout out to the church days, dude. Holy fuck. Yo, praise the Holy Lord, the podcast. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, core entertainment with Discord. And, you know, you got on, you know, the Carol Connection. Yeah, I think that's what really, I think after the, I think it was like during core, that's what really kind of like, I did Grand Rising. It wasn't Spawncast beforehand. It was Grand Rising first. So it was kind of like, I wasn't. I wasn't really focused on my own podcast, which is weird. I was more fo more focused on guessing on other podcasts to kind of just, like, get the feel of it of, like, all right, like, do, how is the vibe and stuff? I've listened to a few podcasts. Obviously, it was Rogan and all those typical ones, like the Peter, uh, Jordan Peterson ones. But um, actually being a part of it, like, the winner gets nothing. I did a lot of work with them in the Politicast. Uh, that's what got me more enshrined in politics and being more open in that field. But, um yeah, it just honestly, I it was great just getting myself out there and realizing like this is what I love doing. And it's funny because I was I'm like if you guys listen to the, the last episode I was on the Carol Connection, like I I definitely I think we were talking about like my social anxiety and and like how it this podcast well podcast in general has pushed me to expand my I guess push my bravery in the sense of trying to put, make myself more vulnerable by being out there doing podcasts and stuff. Cause I can imagine the same with you, you know, you're putting yourself out there. People know you, but you don't know them. I don't know if you've ever, cause I, I, cause when I was out in public actually doing an event in um, Virginia, people started yelling out spawn cast. I was like, Oh fuck. <laughs> and that shit's like a bug out. Cause you're like, wait, people know me through that. Like it's, it's just kind of weird. Cause it's, I guess it's like a, no, I was going to say victim mentality, but, uh, what is it? Fuck. It's being recognized, I guess. Like, no, what? It, it, bad, but it was like, uh, I'm trying to remember. It's like a false, ident false identity. I felt like I was like, uh, it was oh, just I feels weird because it's like, uh, I, imposter syndrome type thing? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, I love doing this stuff, but it's like, it's like, it doesn't, like, I don't know. It's just, it just seems weird that, like, People are reckoning. Ah, I don't know. It's hard to explain, man. No, I, I, I get that. I mean, there's sometimes where I go out in public. I'm always wearing my merch. Like I'm, yeah. I'm wearing the sweatshirt now. I have the shirts. Like I have a hat. Like I'm always wearing merch. And like when people like will say something, and like I turn around, or like I've had people say, "Oh, I've seen your shirt here." Or, I've seen people wearing your shirt. I didn't know who it was, but I mm. saw them wearing it. It's like 
shit, maybe this is like making some waves more than I really think it is. Mm-hmm. And like the hardest thing I think for us content creators is like giving ourselves our own flowers because like you instantly want to compare automatically. You see what everyone else is doing. You see how you're doing. I like, I see your stuff when you post just the pictures and the quality of the content that you're posting. Like, I'm like, damn, like my camera's not like that. Like mm. you might not be posting the pictures, but like, I know the quality of it is like still really good. And you showed, showed us a little bit and like it is. And like, when I look at mine, it's like, damn, like I wish mine was more like that, but it's like, I've said it multiple times in this podcast, like comparisons, like the thief, joy like you got to actually really enjoy your process and i think part of this conversation is like talking about the struggle of like consistently doing doing the damn thing like it is hard and like i've listened a lot of ever-changing vibe recently i don't know if you want to give you like your thoughts on this because i've I've listened to the way you've talked about stuff and like i could hear that that internal struggle and like i really related to it and like it kept me listening to multiple episodes i think to go off your your point like joy is the uh or comparison comparison is the thief of joy it's like I'm young enough. I don't need to have joy right now. I, I can love the hindsight. I can love looking back and be like, oh, that time when, when it was all shitty, I actually enjoyed that. Like, that's what got me here. That's the the connection that built, like, taught me how to do video editing or, or that I needed a camera. Like, so I'm okay right now if it's, like, not working out, if it sucks and, and I hate the grind. I just am so committed, like... To the grind. Like, I, I, I don't care. I don't need a lot of people listening to, to the podcast right now because I'm developing my art form. I'm de- I'm trying to become the best version of of what Wally is as a podcaster. And and if I am growing, you know, an organic fan base from that, like, over time, like, that's awesome. Those are, those are my, like, day one fans um, or my, my day one audience. And then when I'm ready to, like, be like, no, this is the stuff that I want to put out there. You can get through all that process knowing that, like, you're not stopping tomorrow. If, if I just put out a podcast, it doesn't have to be amazing because as long as the next one's better than the, the previous one. And you just keep putting out your podcast and uh, I, I don't know. I, I, that's, I don't worry about, like, having fun right now. I, I feel like I have fun in the moment. Like, I have fun hanging out with people. Do I have fun, like, doing the content and everything? Like, no, I don't need to be doing the content the content's my excuse to hang out with people. So that part of it for me is like what makes me like, okay, whether I'm comparing myself and, and sucking the joy out of it. Like I know that I'm continuing to make my podcast to, to build a platform that can have guests on that, that can put a platform out for people that want to have a voice or, or whatever, whatever it becomes like, it doesn't matter. I I just know I'm going to keep doing it. So, so it, I think, oh, yeah, no, no. That, I was going to say, it's a great mentality that you have, especially as a content creator. I think a lot of people, even like the generation coming up, or people new into content creating or have been content creating for even just a little bit, like everything takes time. And I think it's better to know that at least the fan base you have is like they're loyal. You rather have that loyalty to know that, like, no matter how, like, you know, because we were talking about before, like, you rather have those lo- loyal followers, say, for example, like, Oh, like Andrew Tate, for example, like how like he got banned stuff. Those loyal followers are going to follow you wherever you go because they believe in you. They believe in yeah. what you do, and because I said because a lot of these new people, like TikTok famers, they you know they come and go because they're not used to that grind. They're not used to keeping a consistent schedule of content creating what it does to actually keep like the co- good content going. You know, because mm. they're just they're riding the the fads and stuff, and they just want that quick um, satisfaction instead of the long term like goal of just it also yeah. depends on what your goal is like my goal is to do this full time I, I yeah. like which to in order to do it full time i have to have some type of revenue that like can sustain a lifestyle that doesn't mean i have to be the joe rogan i don't have to be the the number one podcast on apple or whatever it is or youtube or, or um what have you but i just need to like that's my goal. So I don't need to pander to people. I don't need to say a certain thing. I can't be canceled because I'm just I'm just creating the content. Like I'm just working on the craft of what podcasting is. It'll become that over time. As long as I keep committing to the this craft, like it'll get to where it needs to go. I don't want to rush through. I don't want to just, you know, necessarily throw so much money into promotion at, on on like like I'm in my eighties, I'm also in, in the nineties uh for my uh podcast like i don't want the fan base right now like i'm not i'm not trying to get that so quickly i want to enjoy this this journey i want to get to that goal i don't want to be at that goal because what happens when you're at that goal Mm -hmm. like i'm young i want to enjoy like i want to i want to 
keep having fun, try different s- stuff out. Like I started as a gaming Instagram channel. You did, you did. Yeah, shit, I forgot. Yeah, but if I call duties. Yeah, yeah. If, if but I had to learn that I didn't want to do that every day or or like as a career to find that I like did enjoy podcasts. Like that's how I created some of the networking. That's when I like really uh, you you sent me a DM when I first made that account and it was like it was so empowering. I was like, oh shit, like. I thought it was really about uh, gaming at the time, but like I realized it was like, oh no, this is me finally being old enough to accept that I have a passion and I think I found my passion. It's something with content and I didn't know at the time, but uh, like I found that it was podcasting. I just had to get myself into the, into a podcast and like learn how to do it. And then going on your show and, and watching what you do, I'm like, Oh, this is a reality. This is not just for famous people. Like anyone can do this. If you want to do it and you commit to it, you can do it. Yeah, I think the part too with being able to like collab and stuff is like now you guys you guys obviously have your own platforms and stuff like that. You get to see how I do my stuff. Obviously we're in the Ever Changing Vibe studio, but like we bring it I bring kind of like my mentality, the way I do things and like you can see how I how I do it and I try to keep it Mostly simple because it's just myself doing it a lot of the time in my my house. So like little things like that is where you could see how I host versus how you guys host, and like you could take what you need and leave what you what you don't want. So it's like I think it's important to have these interactions where you can bring people together, have these conversations. And I've always built my platform on having conversations centered around mental health, at least because like it's I don't like getting political all the time because it's so divisive for a lot of people, but something that people really need and can rally behind is mental health. Cause I saw you made that post about what happened in like Virginia and stuff like that. And like mental health is a huge issue and I wish more people would just be open about talking about it. And it's, it's an important thing to talk about because we all deal with it. Like every single day we all have our own struggles. We all have our own things that we have to, to, to like overcome. So it's important to be able to have these conversations with people and people you don't know. I think that's one of the more challenging things that I kind of force myself to do is like, yeah, it is uncomfortable to slide into someone's DMs be like, Hey, you want to come do a podcast? Like <laughs> yeah, it's hard as fuck. Like it's, it's like, it's, it's getting yourself out of that mind space. of like, what if they think I'm weird? What if they don't, what if they say no? Like, you just, you get over it. Like I've gotten so many no's, but like usually the no's are always very filled with compassion. It's like, I really appreciate you actually reaching out. And like the fact that like you found my life interesting enough for me to, for, to ask me to come on, mm-hmm. people appreciate that even if they don't do the podcast. So it's like acknowledging people. Like when I first reached out to you is acknowledging the fact that I saw something that I thought was dope that you're doing. And that's what I do with my platform is I look for people who I think are doing dope shit and I want to talk to them. And I think it's putting people on. And when I was thinking about my platform and we're kind of transitioning into this of like the kind of the struggle of to consistently make the content is like, yeah, it's hard to get guests all the time. And it's hard to like consistently motivate yourself to push and push this content, especially in social media where everything's in your face. But in five, 10, however many years we continue doing this, you're creating a platform for yourself to say whatever you want in the future. Like, I think we're seeing now more than ever how important it is to have a space for you just to speak, like where it can be taken away and there's so many different opportunities and platforms that you could go to in the future. But creating that audience, like you were saying, was like being able to have people that are going to follow you and listen to you. I think that's that's super important. I don't know if you guys have seen that in the growth of your content of like certain people maybe in your own life it, that gravitate towards what you're doing or actually give a fuck. Like mm. you think that people might not care about what you're doing, but people do. People pay attention oh, and fast. like... I don't know if you guys have seen that in your own content. I don't know if you want to go first. And hey, I, was, I know you want to ask, well, I, this is kind of like a bit about updating like what I've been through. It's funny you say that because like, and I think we, I think everybody content creators out there, you can definitely uh, understand like we get to those walls where we're like, damn, like are we, is fucking, are we doing enough and shit like that? And, um, yo, uh, so, and it was, it was one of those days for me, man. I was like, fuck, like I'm not, you know, I feel like I'm not doing enough work, blah, blah, blah. Then one of my old guests actually shout out to Gerard, uh, Gerard, the photographer, episode 38. Um, he came on, he actually hit me up, um, I'm trying to remember now, yeah, three weeks ago, and he's like, hey man, uh, what are you doing on Wednesdays? So I'm like, yo man, kind of just, you know, sometimes podcasts here and there, and he hit me up, and he, and uh, shout out to DJ Rock too, of Virginia's Got Talent, um, they both host, like I said, Virginia's Got Talent, what that is, is a bunch of local entrepreneurs, like, um, not entrepreneurs, but I guess you can say entrepreneurs as well, because they are art- artists, as, and that is an entrepreneurial field in that sense, but, um. Yeah, local artists, rappers, country music, like any type of music, they come up, sign up, and just perform. They get five minutes on stage, promote themselves, and uh, what they wanted was to do a podcast segment to kind of just like 
you know, asked them how they're there, you know, how it was being on stage and like what, you know, and just kind of like a quick interview. This is a very quick interview style. Like so a Kill the, Tony almost? Kill Tony's the, the stand up. Oh, where they bring comedians here. Like, yep. Yep. Watch a hat. And then they just Love like that roast show. Him. I've been binging yeah, that like crazy. It's fucking good. Yeah, well, well, we don't roast them. Not yet, anyways. But, <laughs> right, well, but it's, it's the same concept, exactly. just like different content. Mm -hmm. And then, they, uh, but now they want me. Then, you know, he was like, you know, we wanted to do a podcast segment, and you were the first person I thought of, man. I love what you do and the work. And, you know, I mean, that, you know, I mean, that, yo, know, that definitely hit. I was like, damn, like, thank you. I appreciate you know, if you even think about me, too. So now every uh, Wednesday, I go and they set me up my own little room, bro. I bring my. You know, a roadcaster, mics, and just do me, bro. You know, it's pretty fucking sick. I, I, I think that is, like, kind of the answer to, like, when you're going through the rut. Mm -hmm. If you really do believe, and, and I use the, the whole undeniable, like, phrase or term that, that like, has worked for me. Uh, but whatever it is, if you believe in your, that you're going to do that thing, mm -hmm. you're going to go through ruts all the time. And knowing that I'm going to continue doing my podcast, everything might be going the opposite way. But I know I'm going to, like, I know something's going to hit me and it's just going to be like, oh, I have the confidence. I have what I needed. Like, there's been times where, like, I haven't been ready. I'm like, I don't have any concepts. I don't have nothing to talk about this week. I don't have any ideas. I don't have any themes. I haven't jotted any notes down. I haven't done anything in, in like, three weeks. I don't have, like, a story about going to New Hampshire or Maine or whatever. Like, I have nothing. And then Eli gives me a call and, and we just talk for two hours about nothing. And I'm like... That, that's what I needed. Like, you just get that, that, that random thing. Like, or, or I just have a conversation with my dad and, and I, I just bring up that, you know, I'm struggling with podcasting. And then he starts talking to me about, uh, you know, teaching and everything. And then I go, yeah, I don't want to be a teacher for like in my own head after the phone call, like, I don't want to be a teacher forever. Mm -hmm. So I don't give a fuck what kind of rut I'm on. I just got to go do something. I got to go. I, I got to force myself out of this rut and it's not going to be, you're not going to enjoy it. But you're going to get through it. You're going to do it because you believe in yourself. That, that's like the most important thing. And it, it, if you believe in yourself, it's going to happen. You're gonna, it, when you're on your lowest low, if you still believe that it's going to happen, you're going to have that little lucky charm, that Eli call, you, you talk to your dad, you, 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 know, you, you meet your new girlfriend or whatever it is that gives you that little bit of motivation to get you to the, the next episode. Or three episodes, or five episodes, and then your next rut hits, and then another magical moment happens right when you need it. That's I, th I think to go off that too is the point with what you're making is like the waves of life. And like this past year, I've really been getting more into being more patient with myself. And I think this last year, I've kind of been in less of like a chaotic environment emotionally because I'm, I'm very open about like what I'm going through in my, my life. And I try to kind of ride that wave sometimes is like, you're going to have lows, you're going to have highs. Like that's the part of life is to experience all of it. And when you try to avoid that, those low points where you're struggling to make content, or maybe you're fighting with your siblings or your girl or your, whatever the situation is, like it's part of life. Like it's going to happen. Like nothing is always great all the time. Cause if it was, it probably kind of suck if it was always good. Like I think those parts of going through this process is important in creating content because when I was doing my birthday reflection, acknowledging while I was doing it was like, this was going to be cool to look back in like however many years of like what I was going through at that time, changing from 26 to 27, like to be able to talk about that openly and reflect on the past year. I think it's important to have that space for yourself to be able to, to do this content because when you're interviewing people like very consistently, like I've based my podcast around that it is taxing on yourself mentally to like find guests consistently who want to do it. And like running through those, those emotions can, can really fuck you up. Cause like when you don't feel like you have a guest, you don't have a podcast and like it can really mess with you. And like, I've seen you make that own change in your own podcast. Yeah. just like where you were running into that wall of like, I don't know if I want to keep interviewing people all the time. It's like, how can I just do this? Yeah. I mean, my thought process with that is like, I want to be able to create great content. I can never learn how to create good content if, if I'm only getting content because of my guests. So it was a little bit of a, like, throw myself in the deep end and just figure out how to do this. And, and I'm getting better, you know, uh, doing my solo rants. I'm, uh, when I first started doing them, they're just chaotic, just like me talking uh, and, like, seeing something in the room and start talking about Pokemon. And now I'm talking about Star Wars because I saw Star Wars. That, oh, there's a basketball. Like, now I'm talking about basketball. Like, 
and it was just a nonsense rant for like two hours. Now I like, I, I've done enough of them where I, I, there's a lot that I, when I listen back, I'm like, I right, fix that, fix that, fix that. Um, where I at least can go into it with some themes, some topics, sometimes it's one or two. And then I find some along the way, but I can keep, like, I've learned how to like structure my rants. So they're not like, but one of the problems with that is I get bad or I've, I've like, kind of lost my, uh, what I used to be good at, um, when I, when I would have guests and not giving them a chance to talk or talking too much. Not, like my thing is in, in me and Gio on AOHD do this really well. Shout like, out to Gio in the back. I don't know if you want to hit his mic. And yeah, hey, Gio. Hey everybody. <laughs> that sexy voice That's you hear is Gio. So <laughs> it, Gio, Gio knows my style really well. So he knows at any point, just cut me off. Cause a lot of times I just start a ramble and I don't know where I'm going. I'm I'm going through a train of thought as I'm talking. That's how I that's how I think. Um, so when I have guests on again, or I, I do a guest spot, like as I'm doing today, I just I don't realize that the person that I'm sitting across from might not know that they just need to interrupt me. They just need to like change the subject or build off of me. They, at any point. Stop me from talking. Just Is start that a talk- sign? Are you telling me to stop you right <laughs> yeah. now? It's no. like, it seems uh, like he was like, yo, <laughs> shut the fuck Can someone shut me the fuck up right no, I, now, please? Well, I also asked you a question, so I was kind of like, but like, I do that. I tell guests all the time. Like, that's a point I make with my guests is like, I give them a full list of things of like, first, when you guys have experienced speaking on my podcast now at this point, um, I usually, w- this is a different experience. People coming back on, it's a different experience and something that seeing what you do has kind of made me kind of mess with this a little bit and changing the name to stuff obviously i'm calling this spontaneous vibes and just kind of picking stuff but when people come on i give them like a like a list a bullet point of like we're going to talk about this this and this and if we get off topic it's fine i can bring us back yeah um i look forward for motivational stuff cliche stuff like i like that stuff when i post my content but i'm like you got to interrupt me like don't feel bad to interrupt me i'm giving you that pass yeah, to do that what i was thinking is I was to say, if you want to, like, like, I'm good at letting people just go because, like, yeah. that's I want to hear my guests talk. Like, I'm yeah. good at feeling the space because obviously, dead air and podcasting is not good, mm-hmm. but like being able to be like, hey, it's okay. And like, usually, you see after about like 15 to 20 minutes in the podcast with someone new, like, Always. they get the hang oh, of yeah. it. Yeah. Always. I thought it's funny because, like, I can imagine a lot of the people you've had on are first time podcasters, yeah. right? That, well, they've well, been on for the first yeah, time, like, yeah, they've yeah. never been on before, but I feel like that's a. I can imagine the feeling though after like when you finally like in that you you make that break where they fully just let down their guard and just fully just be themselves. You're like, yes, I did it. And then you just like that flow just good. You can, like you said, you can tell the flow definitely is a lot more like I got, there's a few guests I've had on where I've had to pull the damn weight so much where I'm like, Oh, come on. Like you got nothing to talk about. Like, come on. Like oh, it's who? No, 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 no. <laughs> episode number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, it's def- I definitely, I definitely had a few. I definitely, had, you know what I mean. But that's part of that's, podcasting, though. Exactly, what? and I want to go back to like where you say, like, if life was supposed to be comf- like easy, like, like what, like what? Why would we even do this? We want the challenge. We want to see what Where's potentials we can do. For- yeah, if it's not, if it's so easy, like everybody would be doing this, you know. And that's why I remember. I think it was when we were starting podcasting. We were talking about st- the statistics. I think I remember specifically. There's like, I don't know, like I don't know, like two million podcasts right now. But I think actively, I think there's only like less than a million who actually post like weekly, like act, like act. You know what I mean? Because people who start and think it's easy and then just fall off. Because that was one of the the most motivational thing when I was starting. Is I remember talking to you about it and you were saying it's the, or maybe you were talking about on on one of your podcasts. You were saying it's the ten to twelve episode Mm -hmm. that everyone either falls off Mm. or if you make it past you make it so i remember doing a big milestone episode um i actually did it on episode nine like i'm about to like accomplish this so then i could hit the ground running with episode 10 imagine you Uh, didn't make 10 (laughs) <laughs> Imagine you didn't make ten like you thought Dude, you were gonna make the ten. I, I know, and, and I just, I, I've, I've seen I've seen it happen where yeah. people like have the ambition to do it, they start it, and then it's. I mean, you got to think about it. You got to figure out what to talk about every single week that you do a podcast if you're gonna do it weekly. Most people don't got a lot of shit to say, and like they can't, they don't base their podcast off anything. Like, while is a great rancer when he goes on his rants. Like, they're honestly they're kind of like I look at it as kind of like famous rants where like he's <laughs> able to just do it, like. 
most people can't do what you do. They can't figure out stuff to talk. And maybe maybe it could be ADHD or some random shit. Yeah, but like, no. it also works in your favor because you're able to create content off it. A lot of people can't do that. And they just kind of talk about the same shit over and over. And like, I mean, you see the redundance of podcasting when people talk about the same shit over and over. Yeah. But like, you got to have content. And like, at the end of the day, if you're not going to pick a, like a niche almost and like a figure out a way to navigate that, you're going to probably fail at this. Like, and it goes back to what you said, believing yourself. I've been getting more in that space of like kind of this masculine energy of like, at a certain point, you just got to do the damn thing. Mm -hmm. Like no one's going to do it for you. No one's going to come save you. Like it's like, like it's your podcast. It's your podcast. This is my podcast. Like you just have to do it at the end of the day. No one's going to feel bad that you didn't post. And I think you've made, you made that point yeah. before is like, no one's going to be like, Oh, well, I didn't post this week. Damn. Like I should reach out to him or something. No one's going to do that. Like when so I get into that, I like, I specifically take the, the viewpoint. It's like, no one gives a shit. If I don't put out my podcast, my parents love me. Booth babe loves me. They don't care if I don't put out my podcast, they might notice like, Oh, you haven't been down in the studio for a while. Like what, what's going on? Are you, are you still doing the podcast? And if I tell them, nah, it's not really for me anymore. They're going to be like, okay, great. How's teaching going? Like, mm. they're going to love me for what I do, but they're not on Sunday. Like, Wally, I haven't seen the podcast. Are you posting that this week? Booth Babe, my parents, my my siblings, my, my like, the, the listeners that I, I know listen to, like, every episode, like, they don't even reach out. They, like, and that that's partly why, like, I'm not really worried about putting out video episodes anytime soon. It's like, I don't have this like mass of people like, please give us your video. Give me the video. I yeah. want I have that one person, and it's <laughs> give like, me your OnlyFans. No, <laughs> wait, what? Well, what yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> that too. I knew it. <laughs> um, a lot of hairy butthole pics. Uh, sorry. Sign me up. Can we do that on this podcast? <laughs> Sign me up. I don't, I don't know how wild we can get here. Um, that's the line now. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Get but yeah, I, like, I, no one gives a shit, and the only person that needs to give a shit is the person that that wants to do it but at the same time if you don't want to do it it doesn't matter if you don't put it out mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to do something else in your life like you could do whatever you want in your life if you want to do that be undeniable and fucking do it no one's gonna ask you to do it and, and, and like if you can make people care by building a, a large enough platform or by investing more money like if you pay someone oh they'll start caring Cause that's their pocket. Like mm -hmm. now, now when you start affecting someone's pocket, like if I start paying people to to do the content for me, to do the the production, to do the editing, to do the, now they have stake in in ever changing vibe or or in whatever podcast or thing that I'm doing, because that might be how they feed themselves. That's their gas money for the week, whatever I'm paying them. Mm -hmm. So now they care. Like, yo, you haven't recorded. Do we have anything going out Sunday? Like, then someone might care, but they mm -hmm. don't care about me and my podcast. Mm -hmm. They care about the dollar in their pocket. So, and, and again, it goes back to like, you care about what's important to you. If podcasting is important to you, if your, your passion is important to you, then you're going to do your passion. Nothing's going to stop you. If you actually are passionate about something, nothing's going to stop you. You're going to get those little like miracles that, that come at the right time to help you get through those ruts. And you're, you're going to be able to motivate yourself. Like, like you, you, uh, were explaining how you can kind of man up and just get through those, those ruts when it comes to content. You'll get through that if you know that you're going to do that. Yeah. And I think I've made that point and I'll pass it to you in a oh, second was like the point of like, I've built a lot of my platform on mental health and feel your feelings. And I think that's important, especially as a male figure to kind of talk about those things. But as someone who's kind of gone through my emotions, I've gone to therapy, I've done these things and like, I'm getting back towards figuring out the actual true balance between manning up and actual feeling your feelings. And I think it's important to point out to people who listen to me and who actually like care what I have to say and care what you guys have to say. It's like pointing out the fact that you got to be able to understand and express yourself, but also at a certain point you have to like, you keep, we keep saying over and over, you just have to do it. You just like, have to be a leader, right? In yeah, your own life. That's a huge point right there is you have to be able to lead your own life. Cause like, if you can't lead your life, how would you expect anyone else to follow you? And like, we're not saying like any of our supporters, people who listen are followers, but it's the point of just being like, this is like, you have to take charge of your platform and I think it's important in a time like now is like, especially with the content that we're making is like trying to lead the charge and inspire people. Cause like I've interviewed so many different types of people who do so many different things. And you could probably test this as well. It's like giving them an experience that they actually enjoy and would want to come do again. Mm -hmm. The amount of, like the fact that you guys 
we're like, yeah, I want to come back on. And like this is your third time doing it. It kind of is like in a testament and it makes me feel good that I'm actually creating a platform in a place where people feel like they want to do this. And I think that's an important thing. And I kind of want to dig a little bit back into the spawn cast too, of like, how you created the idea of being able to interview people. Cause you could do so many different types of podcasting. Yeah. Like, like as Wally's has done, he's more switched to kind of like doing his solo stuff. And he's found more comfort in that and exploring that Avenue. And he's tested the interview and stuff and he's done that. But I'm curious to see why you've kind of chose the interview route and why you've kind of stuck with that too. Okay. I want to go back to like you were saying, like, yeah, yeah, you, I you like, can hit that first too. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, I think a thing um, now that we lack most, like uh, mostly male males in general is having that. Um, I could, I guess connected to accountability, the accountability of being self-reliant on yourself and like realizing the actions you take, either whether it be action of inaction, it affects you. You know what I mean? If you purposely not taking action to do what you need to do, like you're only hurting yourself, you know what I mean? And you, we just have to be more accountable and seeing people like you and Wally being accountable for, even though it's, like you said, I think it's better because it's you're not doing it for anyone. Else. You're accountable because you want to do it for yourself because you can have self gratification for getting these episodes out. Because you're like, damn, I feel proud because I did this for myself and no one else. Obviously, you're doing it because of the guests that are coming out to you. You want to show a light on them and their greatness. But you know, in the like, in the you know, what I mean, what got you started in the first place because you wanted to do it for yourself. You know, and it's great to have leaders like you know, what I mean, like yourselves that have the accountability of yourself. Like, I'm not going to give up on this. I'm going to take every risk I can. But I'm going back to what you're saying, though, on the question of Spawn. It's funny because I started off with Spawncast was Grand Rising, and that was my solos. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't know, man. It's I can't. I just don't have that ability, like fucking Brandon to. Oh, it Wally is special, you, the fucking, a special ability to do that. Like I definitely want to give you your flowers and that. You hate on your, you hate on yourself for that, but like to be able to actually just talk about anything and whatever comes to your mind and just do that for an extended period of time, that's hard. Like it is hard. Like. It's it is an ability, and like you might not even realize it while doing it, and you might hate on yourself. Like I'm just ranting about whatever. Like I keep my shit at like 20, 30 minutes when I do solos because I find it hard to keep going and talking about stuff. The fact that you can just push past that barrier and do like over close to almost two hours sometimes that's impressive. But obviously, I don't want to like cut you off. No, 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 I love it. No, I love you. I'm loving this. Not but it's <laughs> Me <exa> too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like keep sending them flowers, motherfucker. <laughs> no, but exactly, you know, and that's the thing. It's just like I was just trying to find my niche and. uh it's again going back to like my social anxiety, like growing up as a kid. It's because I just like, oh, I guess I just didn't think I had nothing to say, you know. And just you know, later on, people are just like, yo, you're a pretty intellectual, you know, person. Like you do have some shit to say. And I just think it's better for me to talk to other people to bounce off of. To then, oh, sorry, that's me. <laughs> I'm like my shake, but um, it's it's just I think for me, it's better for my if to help my thoughts and process them to bounce off someone else to. You know, just, I don't know, it's, it's, I just like having that ping pong game, you know, just like, you know, I say something that I hear what someone else, and it's good too, I feel like with interviews, because you just open up your array of possibilities of different ways to live and mindsets to learn and things you can take for yourself to learn and how to better your podcast or, you know, or maybe things you didn't like about, you know what I mean? It's just communication skills too. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, you know I mean, obviously my retired ass still learning. So it's just like, fuck, <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? It's, it, and that's why I love about it though. Cause it's, I never like my, like 10 years ago, I, I wouldn't see myself doing this. You know, I did not have the social skills. Like I'd be afraid to go up to girls and be like, anyone want to go on a date? You know what I mean? It's just such a different person and you don't know what you're and again going back to like you don't know what you're capable of until you just put yourself in the deep end like you said you know what i'm saying and you know take the risk on yourself man you better fucking take a risk on yourself you sons of sexy bitches all right <laughs> i think because like what you're hitting on too is like i felt the same way it was like i always i'm a very introverted person naturally um people are like oh you do a podcast you do all social media you're doing all the shit but i'm like i'm still very introverted like oh, yeah. after this podcast i don't really want to talk to people mm -hmm. like like i this is like my hangout and like i've had to explain that to people it's like when I'm doing my podcast, I'm not just doing an hour of just recording. Like it's usually multiple hours of hanging out with that person. And like, I like to create the experience, like give them the shirts, like the hats, the sweatshirt, whatever I'm offering as my merch and like making it enjoyable for them, for them to actually promote themselves. Cause like what I've learned about human psychology is people love to naturally talk about themselves. Yeah. If you can hit the right strings and the chords and stuff like that, people will just pour it out like a waterfall. So like it's part of human psychology and learning what, how people react to different things and how comfortable they are in situations and making them comfortable. So I think as a host, you learn that it helps you just naturally in life. Cause obviously we live in a social media world where it's hard to communicate with people and have sit down face to face conversations. 
and being a host of like our podcast, I think we're able to push past that barrier. Mm-hmm. No, because it's a hard, it's hard, you know, to find like, especially now, like with COVID, you, there's a lot of people out there who are lacking critical social skills. You know what I mean? Especially the children that are going to be growing up, you know, who are, you know, maybe only been at school for, you know, online, you know what I mean? Or just in general, even adults, you know, who just already were introverts at, like in the office. So now they're at home all the time. And the only time they talk to people is through zoom. And it's becoming more, I feel like it's becoming more of a rare and rarer uh, skill. And, you know, we take it for granted because, you know, it's the people who suffer most in life are the ones who are silent. So we need to, you know, have more conversations, more ways to. I suffer too, dude. No, you're just special. <laughs> I might not be silent, but, yeah. but I think you're hitting a good point. Is you have to be your loudest advocate at the yeah. end of the day. Like you and I've I've said this on podcasts, and I'm sure you guys have hit, hint at this point within your own podcasts. Like you, like you got to promote yourself at the end of the day. Like we're all brands. It's social media is a thing, and like I hate people hate this, but like social media is your resume for life. Like when I look at someone's social media. Whether you want to do it or not, you're judging them. Like, you're looking at the pictures they take, where they're at, what they're doing, what they're saying, like, anything they throw on their story. Like, maybe I'm overanalyzing, but people still analyze regardless on, like, what they're looking at. So, like, and and that's part of the reason I get guests is, like, I look at what they're doing, and if I think that they're sharing a certain amount or saying a certain thing or doing something interesting, I can ask them to be on the podcast. So, social media is a huge factor and the way we move through life and like i've even seen that in my workplace just like i'm someone who wants to be working from home i don't want to go in the damn office mm. i always made the joke is like just say you don't like your family and friends that's why you <laughs> want to be in the office like like that's always been my pushback is for someone who doesn't have to be in the office yeah. mm. obviously you're in a profession that might be a little bit different or same with you but like for me i can do my job at home and i prefer to do that because like my social battery is like when i'm out in public it's drained very fast so When I choose my situations to hang out, like doing the podcast, like this is where I want to exert myself. This is where I want to push my energy. So it's, I think, knowing yourself, figuring out what environments that you thrive in, and then continually to try to put yourself in new situations to learn and see what you like and add to like what you're actually building. Because like we're all building something at the end of the day. And I think having us in this room together is like, it's cool because like, we all have our own different thing. Like we're all hosts. Like when I look at all of this, I just see leaders leading what they do, coming together, coming to a table. It's like a conference of great minds. And it's like, it's cool to actually be able to sit and like have you guys here and like do this podcast. Cause like you guys get it. Like, mm. I just like, I love that concept. Um, we are definitely getting towards like the, probably the last like 15 minutes of this okay. podcast. So I kind of want to, loop back to this question this kind of a little more like joking but like the thanksgiving christmas thing like like i just want to i want to get back to this because like i thought this was i was literally thinking this on the way here because like driving seeing all the christmas lights like it was just pissing me off like i'm not gonna lie (laughs) my birthday's in november so like maybe i'm just taking it to heart thanksgiving we need to put thank like respect on its fucking name like it's like people hate turkey i get it just change the damn dish but like thanksgiving is thanksgiving like i think thanksgiving needs turkey but that's besides the point like i think christmas stuff after Thanksgiving, yep. but understand the capitalism aspect, like you need to like sell the stuff, like all that shit. I get that. But like putting up the lights, the trees, like I think it should wait. My personal opinion. I don't know. No facts. I'm on the That's same a- boat with you. I'm like, motherfuckers be jumping. I'm like, motherfucker, you even eat your fucking Thanksgiving dinner yet and you're already humping the gifts and shit. Bitch, sit down, be <laughs> humble. Like you're the fuck respect your turkeys. You're about to disagree. I can, I can, I got this vibe, yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Man, Let's hear it. Of course, Wally. Let's Give me some good points. If you I hear good points, I'll, okay. I'll <laughs> I might concede. Growing up. Black Friday, like the Friday after Thanksgiving, that's when Christmas mu- music could be on. That's when you can watch your first Christmas movie. That's when you can start decorating. I used to have, because <clears throat> we'd spend uh, Thanksgiving with my dad's side of the family. So uh, my grandparents would fly up from Florida, and the day that they would come to just be with my like immediate family would always be the Friday after, and they would help us decorate the trees, set up the decorations. We'd bring things down from the attic, whatever. At least... Like the Friday, um, and I, and last year I didn't do anything for Christmas. So I was living with uh, my my best friend, and and we didn't. We both had a bedroom. We had one spare room. We did not give a shit about Christmas. I don't care about any of that. I don't. I'm not into the decorating. I'm living with Booth Babe now, and I am finding love for so many stupid little things that like I would never like. The moment the idea is brought to my attention, I start roasting it. Like, 
oh, can we set up now? Oh, can we buy our own Christmas tree? Like, no, what the fuck? We're not getting our own Christmas tree. Like, what? But it's going to look so cute. Oh, should we get an advent calendar? Oh, can we get, like, and the same thing with Halloween. Like, oh, should we get, like, pumpkins? And I'm like, that's fucking stupid. Why the fuck are you buying something that you're throwing out at the end of the, like, I don't want to cut a pumpkin. It Just leave the pump. The pump. I, I, I go off every single time. <laughs> This past weekend, we went to, to like Target to do some like Christmas shopping, um, and she had ordered some things online. And on Sunday, we're just kind of sitting around the house. I'm watching some football, doing a little like uh, stuff with the podcast, playing a little video games. She's like, "I know it's early. We talked about it, but um, I don't know what time or when I'll have time to actually decorate. And we're just home today. Do you care if I decorate?" I'm like, "Honestly, I've learned." that I love everything that you do. I've come home, like, so that Sunday night, we set up the Christmas tree, put on the lights, she she decorated the whole thing, and I love coming home. I get excited when it gets dark out again, and I love turning on the lights. I love the red and white colors. I'm actually really enjoying this, and I am justifying it for this one reason. Thanksgiving is hosted at my brother's this year, so I'm going there. So it's not like we're taking away Thanksgiving. It's not like I had to take down Thanksgiving decorations. We just started, you know, Christmas a little early and I am loving it. My only rule was no Christmas music or movies until Black Friday. Like we have to finish Thanksgiving before I get in the Christmas spirit. I hear it coming down the, the street, like blasting Christmas music. Like yesterday, I'm like, this fucking yeah. dude, I, <laughs> just, the fuck I just can't stand just the jumping of the gun. Like, I just, like, I love Thanksgiving. Like, I, like to me, I'm like, if you don't like Thanksgiving, it goes back to the point, just say you don't like your family and your friends. Like, to me, Thanksgiving is about community. Like, straight up. Like, it's yeah. all about, like, people coming back home from college, reuniting, like, mm -hmm. the small town football games. Like, I love football. Watching football on TV, getting around for dinner or lunch, whenever you do the Thanksgiving meal, like... I think it's all about family and friends. Like you could say the same about Christmas too. So if you hate the holidays, just, I mean, shit, like I, I we don't even have to go into that point, but it's shit, just that's like a depressing fucking holiday. Yeah, I mean, I can understand with certain scenarios, but like, yeah, like if your dad was abusive and it was always the worst around Christmas and then he left. In, hey, he's still Christmas getting cigarettes Eve, and milk. Like, all right. Don't yeah, talk shit. Yeah, nah, he's not coming back, dude. Not for the 2%. Come on, man. I've been waiting for this fucking bowl of cereal. Like, come on, damn it. No, dude, you're not famous enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> but going back, actually, going back, it's, it's crazy because I actually had a conversation um, with a, a mother that was on my podcast, and it just seems like now, um, just uh, generalizing Americans, um, we lost, like, I don't know, me personally, like, I've noticed because, like, well, my family, we're very close. Like, I don't know about y'all's family, but we're very, very close because, like, you know I mean? I'm, I'm a first-generation American, so it's like we have very tight bonds with family and shit. And, like, it's just... I feel like that culture isn't as strong as it used to be in America nowadays. Like, I don't know if it's because of COVID. I don't know because, like, the things, obviously, every the things have been going on for two years, but I feel like it's not as, like, a, a main... Th and, I like, I feel like people still like Thanksgiving before. Like, it was... Like, people now, like, completely disregard it like you say like oh fuck it thanks it was just food whatever like they don't care but they people forget like like you said just being together and appreciating the simple things of i wouldn't say simple but it's you know it you know just being with the ones you love man and, and we forgot about that just i don't know it that's how that's what i'm seeing america like i feel like we forgot that major foundation of this country is like our communities and our families especially is yeah like what brought us here i think you're like, hitting on a point too yeah. it's like thanksgiving is about being thankful mm -hmm. like and it's being appreciative, being able to look back. It's like this time of year is very reflective for myself. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. It's like you're able to look at what you did this last year, look at the, the new friends you might have made, look at the new content you might have made, um, new relationships, whatever, whether it's business, romantic, friendship, doesn't matter. But like it's about growth and appreciation. And just, I think a lot of people don't reflect enough. And I don't think people are very appreciative of where they are currently. Obviously, things can be worse wherever you're from. But there's something with American culture right now that's very off and it's very off putting. Um, me, I think I've heard a lot of people talk about different points and maybe part of it too is like, I'm not a very religious person, but maybe part of it is because we don't have a uniting religion or we don't have a uniting sense of like nationalism in this country where we don't all represent one specific or specific morals and beliefs. Like there's nothing that really unites us in the United States, which is like an interesting thing to like look at in 2022. And, Hopefully, we can get back to a place where there is something that can unite us. I hope it doesn't have to be some tragic like event, mm. but I think hopefully we can get there. I mean, hope is a big word, but 
I don't know if you guys feel the same way. Like when I look across at just social media and the content that's made, it's very, can be very divisive. And like, I've even pulled back. I know the content that I used to talk to you about. I don't really like watch a lot of that stuff no more. It's like, mm. I've just kind of just, I want to watch stuff that like, I told you you get there. I mean, it, like I still don't get me wrong. I still watch it. Like I definitely watch it for the entertainment value, but like, BBW is good. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, he's like, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I agree, but <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, why are you looking like? I don't know what EBW is. So wait, EBW, BBW. Oh, oh yeah, no. I fully support. Give or take. I fully support. Yeah, I fully support. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> add your two cents. It's a lot to give. Ooh. Hey, good point. Good point. Hey, a lot. Hey, got a lot. And muted. <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> hey, it's a lot of cake, all right? Of cake. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We're gonna. I'm gonna start wrapping this up because, right. like, I'm gonna let you guys give like you yeah. check your final thoughts and like also at the end of like your little whatever rant you kind of guys decide to go on. Oh but shit, we're gonna wait forever. Bro. I should go first because yeah, yeah, I, I will say. stop. Yeah. Like, yeah. Try to try to keep it under a minute if you can. <laughs> like, if you can, I know it's impossible for you, but yeah. like, but, like just like also then I'll plug yourself too right at the end. So I'll let you guys. Give your final thoughts, kind of wrapping up the podcast, and in terms of, I'll give you at least a topic of just like content creation. Um, no, I, I again, I want to bring it back to like how we started this episode. Just huge shout out to to you and and Eli too. Like, the more you guys do it, the the more I hustle, the more I grind. The the healthy competition, it, it's so important. It it makes me love this game and getting together and collabing and like realizing like, oh shit, I do got to step up my video game. Oh, I got to step up my lighting game when you brought the, the lights that first time. And you're like, oh, that roadcast, what's that? Like, that is more important. And, and like, I have fun with the content. Like that that's uh, more so my excuse to hang out with you guys. And, and, and I really appreciate you. I, I know we don't like necessarily talk every day or we, we might go a long time without talking, but I, I'm always watching, watching those Instagram pages and watching the podcasts and, and it, you know, it makes me feel so good every single time I see you guys doing stuff, especially when you're doing more. Um, you can check out my podcast, Plenty of Flowers uh, from Jared. So let's see if he's right or wrong. Uh, Ever Changing Vibe. Uh, I'm on uh, Instagram, everchangingvibe.pod. Um, on Instagram, uh, also Wally underscore ECV is my Instagram handle uh, for, for my content. Um, and I have also been doing a whole lot with, with my boy Geo A O H D. It's A Zero H D. Uh we have a lot of fun, uh little quick uh YouTube content, a little shorter form. Uh that's been my like my favorite thing as of late. So uh shout out Geo. Thanks. Um <laughs> Got a nice little hand wave. I'll, I'll pass yeah. that out before I go too much. Okay. <laughs> Take us home, Eli, and then I'll wrap us up. Yeah, nah, um, man, again, thank you. Uh, I just want to simply thank you for having me be on your platform again, Jared. It's fucking awesome, man. It's always a pleasure. Being, it's an honor and pleasure being on. Uh, always great vibes, great mind simulation conversations. Um, and Wally, thank you, man. You're just good people to be around, too. Um, it's With content creating, man, it's definitely been a great learning experience. Um, I would say people out there who are starting thinking about it or in the middle of it just fucking believe in yourself man the man woman whoever toaster just believe in yourself you have every if you have the ambition if you have the drive in you just believe in yourself and you can do anything this world has for you and um if you want to listen to my podcast, my fucking goofiness uh the spawncast podcast on streaming platforms and youtube um and Instagram's the Sp uh, Spawncast Podcast or the Spawncast Podcast. And uh, my link tree will be there if you want to see my art, the whole nine. And, you know, thank you guys. And thank you, Carol Connection, for having me on. It's fucking awesome. You should have them do that, that again. It, it sucked. No. Yeah, yeah, I know you suck. All right. Have it, a better point. Yeah, have a better point. Uh, uh, actually, no, nah, I got nothing. I got nothing. I, I got nothing. I appreciate you guys being part of this. It was a long time coming to get to, to get you guys together and do this podcast. Um, I'll be tagging them in the Instagram posts and stuff like that. But if you guys like to check out any other podcast that I have, check it out the Carol Connection .com. Also available Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the major listening platforms. If you like to watch your podcast, you could search me on YouTube, The Carol Connection, or just Jared Carroll should pop up right for you. Um, if anyone wants to be a new guest or a returning guest, please reach out and we can schedule that in the future. So until next time guys, peace while I take us home with the music.